Hey, John Brock here with a uh, tutorial on how to make a timber frame arch or truss. I was working on this house for a builder out in Utah to have this really cool timber frame uh, truss element. And um, so I wanted to model it, bring it to life. And a very uh, quick and easy way of doing it is um, bringing the PDF into SketchUp using PDF importer. And then uh, since it's vector base, I can just trace right over top of it and make the arch uh, pretty accurately. So. Let me show you how that's done. So this is the arch that we're going to create. We'll go ahead and create these columns while we're at it. So we'll, we'll pop into uh, Bluebeam for a second. So I'm over in Bluebeam. You can use any PDF viewer or, or uh, program that you may be using. But I just want this particular. I could import the entire PDF uh, of this drawing into SketchUp using PDF Importer. But uh, I just want this one section. And it just keeps the files cleaner. So in this case, I'm just going to take a snapshot here and um, just kind of go the area that I want and I'm going to do a new file and um, I'm going to just paste it in and move it into position okay that's pretty much got everything I want in there so I'm going to save this as a uh, onto my desktop All right, and I'm just going to call this uh, timber frame as a PDF Okay, so then I'm going to go into a new file of SketchUp, and I'm going to go to Extensions, Import PDF File, and I'm going to go to my desktop and choose that timber frame PDF. And now it's in. So I know that the dimension, I'm going to double click on this. It comes in as a group from PDF Importer. So I'm going to double click on it to edit the group. And I know that the dimension from out of this beam to out of this beam is 22 feet 6 inches. So I'm just typing that into the length box or the measurement box in the lower right corner, hitting enter. Do you wish to resize the group or component? Yes. So now I can double check that. Uh, these should be 10 uh, inch columns, which they are. And uh, so we're good. So I'm going to get out of that edit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this guy uh, just to make it vertical. So I'm going to go on the red axis and just go up 90 degrees. So now I'm how I'm supposed to be. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to start modeling um, these timber frame elements. So I'm going to get rid of that guide here. Uh, I'm going to do my lines first. Do a line from. Got to be very careful when you're snapping here, just to make sure you're hitting the correct point. So I did those three lines there. And then I'm going to do these lines over here, here, and here. Now I've got arches to put in. And I want this to be a smooth curve. So I don't want it to be jagged. You know, there is no true curve in SketchUp. It's these line segments. So I'm going to go 60 sides. Makes it a little bit smoother. I typed in 60 and S. Here, I'll do that again. I started from this point. I went over to this point start going in the direction that I want to go which is in the blue and I'm going to type in 60s and enter in the measurements box and it changed it to a 60 sided arch 60 segments there so I can click to there to the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing at the top from endpoint to green endpoint until it hits there now I have a face and I'm going to pull that up six inches because it's a six inch wide thing so six inches now I'm going to triple click on it hit G to make it a group. G for you may be on your shortcut on your keyboard for make component. I make more groups than I make components, so I just changed it to G. So, um, but you can do as you wish on that. All right, now I'm going to model this portion of it, which I'm just going to model this half of it right now, because that's how it would actually be, would be in halves like that. And it's the same six inches, so I'm going to pull that out to there and infer that point. Again, I triple click on it. I'm making this a group. And then I'm going to use TIG's mirror. This is the mirror plugin. It's free. And pick a point to a point and go up in the blue. Do I want to erase the original? No. So now that just gave me a flip side to it. All right, then I'll get this little center strut in here. And um, you want to zoom up on these things because sometimes those little line segments can um, may not be connecting. So you want to look for an intersection mark. Actually, that one's trying to jump off. Then we'll go down to the bottom. This is an arch section, but I'm just going to go flat with it just since it's such a 
millimole amount. I'll pull that out six inches. Triple click on it, make that a group. Okay, so that's looking good. Then I just have my little two side pieces. Now notice that sometimes these little arcs may not make it all the way to this post. And this will drive you crazy thinking, why isn't it connecting? But it's just not. So I'm going to be on the edge in this group and get close to where I want it. Same there, same here. That's why I do the lines first, because then when I do my arches, I can actually snap right to an endpoint that I know. And we'll click to there. And I'm going to draw an endpoint from here to here here line and then an arch down to here now again I gotta hit this endpoint there so really be careful about that that'll drive you nuts also I'm pulling it out and inferring this face of this group I'm gonna, whoops let's do that again I'm gonna triple click on it I'm gonna make it a group I'm gonna use TIG's mirror command so I don't have to go through those steps again Picking two points along that axis and then in blue, don't want to erase the other. So now we've got our cool little uh, timber frame uh, truss. So the next thing I'm going to do is these little uh, uh, beams that we got in here. So I've got these beams that are running. They stick past a little bit. I'm just going to run it past for now and come to the back side and just pull this guy over just to give it some depth. I'll make that a group. And I'm going to mirror that using TIG's little cool free tool called Mirror. All right. Last thing I want to do is these columns. So the column is going to be a little bit more tricky, but we'll have fun with it. So these have a notch for the beam. And they're 10 by 10 columns. So let's go ahead and complete the shape for it. See, it didn't quite go to there. And that didn't quite go to there. But that's okay. We're zooming up and looking at it up close and personal like. All right, I'm going to pull this out flush, but it's 10 inches, so I'm going to pull it out to enter. I'm going to come over here, pull it out to enter. So now I have the beginnings of this column it's starting to all look pretty good. All right, but this has a uh, this little cool collar to it. So I'm going to use the offset tool. I'm going to pick this bottom face and I'm pulling it out to there. All right, and then from there, I'm just going to pull it down to this next part here. And then just there's lots of different tricks for how to do this. But you can see I'm just using the offset tool. You could use the follow me tool. There's everybody's going to have a different opinion. This just is a quick and easy way of doing it. You can follow back on those steps if you want to refer to it. And then this face actually pulls down to this collar that you see here. So that looks good. Then the stone actually sets in like so. And I'm going to do that same sort of thing. I'm going to bring this portion of the column down. So this is a tapered stone column and it tapers till it gets to right there. And then I'm going to offset to there. And from here down, it's square down to the footing. Then I can just sort of connect these lines to create these tapered shapes that you see here. And this should just be a quick matter of a couple of tapered sections. There we go. I'm going to triple click on that and I'm going to make it a group for now and mirror that over to the other side. So now we pretty quickly came up with a, uh, a nice timber frame arch. We can texture it and do as we wish. If I go back over to the finished product, that's what it looked like. So using PDF importer is a quick way to bring a vector PDF to life and draw on top of it without having to bring in a raster image. Um, and then having to kind of guess at dimensions and so forth. So hope this helps. Thanks for watching.